So I have a special guest with me tonight. Can you say hi, Georgie? Say hi, guys. <laughs> He's really excited. We're going to get um, into our lesson. I think you guys are going to be really excited to see that we are... Oh, Georgie's trying to watch. We are um, getting into standard algorithms. So I... We're just going to be multiple. We're going to be finding fractions of whole numbers. I know the time is gone. Oh, George is so excited. We're going to find fractions of whole numbers, and we're going to do it in two different ways. But the, both of those. Whoa! Please hold. There we go. Hi. I'm back. Both of those ways are completely numerically, right, Georgie? So we're not drawing pictures in today's lesson. We're not making uh, diagrams. Peekaboo. <laughs> Good job, buggy. Um, it's going to be great. Are we ready, George? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, here goes nothing. So here we go. So we are in lesson eight. Our learning target is here uh, to relate a fraction of a set to the repeated addition and interpretation of fraction multiplication. Ay, ay, ay. Here's what we're going to do. Let's just keep it real basic. We're going to be multiplying a whole number by a fraction in two different ways. The first way is we're just going to be multiplying straight across. The second way is we're going to simplify first and then multiply. So here's what that looks like. Can I zoom in anymore? Oh, zoom, zoom, maybe not. Okay, so here's what that looks like. Um, this is the first time, as you guys know, that we're getting into the standard algorithm. So that's why we have two of the same problem. We're going to be doing, doing it two different ways. So you guys know that even though 14 is not a fraction, we can very easily write it as a fraction. It's just 14 over 1. We can... And this is review. We can re rewrite any whole number as a fraction by just putting it over 1. Okay. Um, so we're just going to multiply straight across. We have 14 times 3 sevenths or 14 over 1 times 3 sevenths. So let's rewrite what's going on in the top. What's going on in the top is 14 times 3. We're just multiplying straight across. And then what's going on in the bottom is 1 times 7. So we multiply the upstairs and then the downstairs. We multiply the numerators and then the denominators. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to use standard algorithm multiplication to multiply 14 times 3. Use the scratch paper on the side here. 14 times 3. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 1. Thank you, Arwen, is 3 plus 1. We missed you today, by the way, Arwen. I hope you're feeling a little bit better. Is 4. So 14 times 3 is 42, and then hopefully we can do 1 times 7 pretty quickly is 7. Now, you guys probably recognize the fact that this is an improper fraction. 42 divided by 7 is the same as 42 divided by 7, which is equal to, hmm, 42 divided by 7, Claire, thank you, 6. Awesome. So now we're going to do the exact same problem, but we're going to do something called simplifying first. So here's what I mean by that. So this whole number can be transformed very quickly into a fraction by putting it over 1. <clears throat> so let's multiply across first. So again, we have 14 times 3. And then in the bottom, we have 1 times 7, or in the numerator. So now this is what I mean by simplifying. We're going to look at all four of these numbers. And we're going to think, hmm, do any of these numbers have factors in common? So this is where you're really going to have to analyze these numbers. I see that 14 and 7 have a factor in common. I know that if we divide 14 by 7, and if we divide 7 by 7, we um, will get a whole number. So we have a factor of 7 in common here. So let's go ahead and divide 14 by 7. And we're also going to divide 7 by 7 because we have to treat the numerator and the denominator. We have to treat the top and the bottom the same way. When we divide 14 by 7, we get 2. And when we divide 7 by 7, we get 1. So that's what I mean by simplifying before we multiply. So now the 14 has become a 2. We can very easily multiply 2 times 3. 
Thank you, Ali. And we'll get a six. And wow, that is one sloppy six. And then we can very simply multiply one by one and get a one. Six over one, simplify, six divided by one is six. Hopefully we get the same answer on our second attempt versus our first attempt. We totally did. So we're doing the same thing just in two different ways. Let's look at um, another problem. Let's look at this one, B. Three-fourths, oh, there we go. My Zoom is working now. Three-fourths times 36. So three-fourths times 36, or as we talked about today, three-fourths of 36. We're just going to multiply uh, tops and our bottoms first, our numerators and denominators first. We're going to rewrite 36 as a fraction. 36 can be rewritten as 36 over 1. So now we've miraculously turned 36 into a fraction. And I am kind of sensing that a few of you are a little um, confused by that. So let's just remember that, okay, so 36 over 1 can be rewritten as 36 divided by 1. What is 36 divided by 1, Gabby? Well, it's 36. So we've just proven that 36 is equal to 36 over 1. So if you need to turn a whole number into a fraction and a pinch, just put it over 1 because it's just the same as dividing it by 1, which does not change the value of the number. Cool? Okay, so now let's rewrite our expression. Remember, we're going to do the same problem one, two times. We're just going to do it in two different ways. The first time, we're not going to simplify. We're just going to, um, we're, well, we will simplify, but we're going to multiply first and then simplify. And then over here on the right side, we're going to simplify first and then multiply. These are just two different strategies that you can use when multiplying. Some of you might prefer this strategy, multiply and then simplify. Some of you might prefer for simplifying and then multiplying. I'm just giving you two different strategies and you'll use um, what you feel most comfortable with. But we're going to practice using both and we're going to keep that tool with us in our toolbox. Okay, so what is our multiplication expression upstairs? What are our two denominators? Well, we have three times 36. So that is our multiplication expression upstairs. Our mul multiplication expression downstairs, our denominators are four times one. Okay, so three times 36 and four times one. Now we're going to multiply three times 33 by 36. And we're just going to do that quickly here on the side. Uh, six times three is 18. Thank you, um, Mason. We're gonna carry the one. Three times three is nine plus one is 10. Right. So 36 times 3 is 108. And then Madison is telling me that 4 times 1 is 4. So now we have 108 over 4. We need to simplify that. That is a really improper fraction. So 108 over 4. Hold on, Cal. Mama's doing math video. 108 over 4 is equal to 108 divided by 4. So what we're going to do, and I'll just use the space down here, is we're going to divide 108 by 4 in order to simplify. So we're just going to use long division. How many 4s going to 10? 2. Thank you, Chloe. 2 times 4 is 8. What is our difference between 10 and 8? 2. Awesome. Bring down our 8. Now we have 28, and we're trying to figure out how many 4s fit into 28. Does anyone know that? Thank you. Who is that, Charlotte? Four times seven is 28, or seven fours fit into 28. So when we simplify 108 over four or 108 divided by four, we get seven. Okay, so that's our first way. Now in our second way, we are going to move this. We are going to simplify and then multiply. So we're still looking at 30, uh, 3 fourths times 36 or 3 fourths times 36 over 1. Let's um, set up our what's going on upstairs. So we have 3 times 36 
upstairs. We just multiplied those numbers straight across. And then we have 4 times 1 downstairs. Now before we multiply, remember our strategy, our second strategy, we're going to simplify first. So we're going to look at all three, all four of these numbers, and we're going to think, hmm, do they have any factors in common? I'm immediately drawn to 36 and 4. I see that 36 and 4 share uh, a common factor of 4. I can divide 36 by 4 to get 9, and I can divide 4 by 4 to get 1. So let's go ahead and divide 36 by 4, and let's then divide 4 by 4. So we're going to rename um, those numbers. So 36 divided by 4, yes, exactly, thank you, Cole, is 9. And then 4 divided by 4, thank you, Louie, is 1. So now this is much, much easier to multiply because we've already simplified. So now this isn't a 36 anymore, it's a 9. Now we can think of 3 times 9. Um, is 27. Thank you, Nithra. And then downstairs, we just have 1 times 1, which is 1. Thanks, Fiona. Simplify 27 over 1 as just 27. 27 divided by, oops, <laughs> uh, 27 divided by 1 is 27. And I'm just looking over here. I wrote 7 where, when I should have written 27. 108 divided by 4 is 27, Mrs. Calamares, not just 7. Okay, so I have 27 here. I have 27 here. Life is good. We'll look at one more here. Go look at one more. We're doing the same thing here, but you can actually choose the strategy that you want to use for this section. So let's look at this um, B. That's 3 fourths times 60. We talked about the fact, um, hold on one second, honey. Uh, we talked about the fact um, that 3 fourths times 60 is the same as 3 fourths of 60. Okay. So let's just multiply through. We're actually looking for 3 fourths of an hour is equal to how many minutes? You want pee pee? Oh, okay. Um, hold oh, please. I'm getting pee pee for count. Okay. I'm going to be there in one second, honey. I just have to finish this problem. Three fourths times 60. We can uh, magically turn 60 into a fraction by slapping a fraction bar and putting a 1 over it. 60 over 1 is equal to 60. 60 divided by 1 is equal to 60. So let's write out what's going on upstairs. We have 3 times 60. Beautiful. Thanks, honey. And then we at the uh, downstairs, we have 4 times 1. Um, 3 times 60 and 4 times 1. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply through because I think we can do this pretty easily in our head. We're going to go back to module 1 where we were multiplying and dividing powers of 10. So let's first multiply 3 times 6, which is 18. And then we are going to slap how many zeros at the end of uh, that 18, Sienna? Just one. Brilliant. And then 4 times 1. Tyler, 4 times 1 is 4. Thanks, buddy. 180 over 4. We can simplify that with just some really straightforward long division in any spare space we have here. How many 4s go into 18? Thank you, Tanner. We can fit four. Was that Tanner or Carl? Four with a few left over. Four times four, thanks, Cal, is 16. Carl, are you back from Hawaii? What's the difference between 18 and 16? Thanks, bud. We have two. We're going to bring down our zero. Um, hey, Mr. Calamaris, are you around? Mr. Calamaris is barbecuing a dinner. What is our secret word for tonight? The Winter Olympics. Oh, Mr. Calamaris has a secret word for you tonight. He'll say it one more time. The Winter Olympics. Everyone's looking forward to them, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, yeah, so our es family loves Winter Olympics. Especially Olympic hockey. Oh, yes, hockey. Cal, what, what sport are you looking forward to in the Olympics, buddy? We're looking forward to... Hey, Cal. Cal. Cal's taking a vow of silence. He's not talking right now. Um, how many fours go into 20? Five. Cal showed me with his fingers. Five times four, 20. Cool. So 180 over four is equal to 45. You guys probably already realize that three-fourths of an hour is equal to 
45 minutes. Cool. So we will practice practice this tomorrow. Um, thanks for a great day today. I wonder if any of you are keeping up your vow of silence tonight. Um, Mr. Calamaris, I have a really funny story to tell you about my crazy kids today. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.